So, welcome back and uh, this is lecture number 35. Uh, today, we will continue again with triple integral and uh, we will look for the change of variables uh, in case of uh, triple integral. So, first we will go through the example where we change from Cartesian to spherical polar coordinates. So, a very important uh, change of coordinates. So, here what we have uh, first let us uh, take this Cartesian coordinates and suppose there is a point here x, y, z and when we are talking about the Cartesian coordinate. So, this distance now from here to the x, y plane. So, if we draw a perpendicular here to this x, y plane, then this distance is the z coordinate from this x, y 0 point to this x, y uh, z point and from the x axis along this y axis the distance of this point which was the perpendicular from this x y z point to the x y point is given by the y and then this x coordinate that is the distance from the origin. So, here we have uh, this point as the origin. So, from the origin to this point that is the distance uh, given by uh, x. So, this is x here and then along this y direction uh, we have this distance y and then this is the perpendicular distance along this z axis this is the z. Now, our question is when we change into the spherical polar coordinates then what would be r theta and phi. So, the coordinates in the spherical polar coordinates we denote uh, by r theta and phi. So, r is precisely the distance from the origin to this point. So, now in spherical polar coordinate this distance from the origin to this point to the given point will be denoted by uh, r and then these two are the angles these two are the angles theta and phi. So, here the angle theta will be the angle to this point uh, per, which was the perpendicular from this x y z point to the x y plane. So, this is the angle phi from the x axis. So, this here from the x axis to this line which is in the x y plane to this uh, point x y 0 that is the angle phi. And now, this theta angle, the theta is the angle with this z axis, which this uh, line which is joining this origin to, to this x y z point in, in the space, that angle is denoted by theta. So, again to represent this point, uh, which was x y z in, in a spherical coordinate and now uh, in Cartesian coordinate and now in a spherical coordinate this is denoted by r theta and phi. And now r is the distance from the origin to this point, theta is the angle from the z axis and now this phi is the angle from the x axis to the point which was the perpendicular from uh, this given point to the x y plane. So, with this notation of the spherical uh, polar coordinates, we will now introduce the change of variables in, in triple integral. So, the relation between this x, y, z and this r theta phi is given by uh, x is equal to r sin theta cos phi and y is equal to r sin theta sin phi and z is equal to r cos theta. So, that is the standard uh, relation between the spherical polar coordinates and the Cartesian coordinate. And now, we note that if we make this square here for x square and y square and z square, because this term will be r square sin square theta and this cos square phi. Here also, we will have r square sin square theta the common and then here sin square phi. So, again when we add all, so this cos square phi plus sin square phi will make it 1 and then we have here also r square uh, this cos square theta and from there r square sin square theta. So, again this sin square theta plus cos square theta will be 1 
and we will get simply r square. So, that is the again a relation which we will keep in mind that will be useful uh, in integration. So, whenever we see such a term x square plus y square and z is plus z square and we are going to change the coordinate system. So, we will simply uh, put this x square plus y square plus z square is equal to r square. So, now with this uh, introduction to the change from Cartesian coordinates to spherical polar coordinates, we can talk about uh, the triple integrals. So, here if we have a triple integral given f as f x y z and d x d y d z over some domain d and we want to change to the spherical coordinate meaning that x will be r sin theta cos phi, y will be r sin theta sin phi and z will be r cos theta. So, with this change of variables now the idea is that this is the, the simple idea which we have also explained in the in previous lecture that we need to substitute we need to substitute x is equal to r sin theta cos phi. So, this is here r sin theta uh, cos phi then for y we have substituted here r uh, sin theta this uh, sin phi and uh, for z this r cos theta which was the relation there z is equal to r cos theta. So, with this we have now this Jacobian term that is the extra term which uh, comes when we do this change of variables. So, that Jacobian we need to compute and then our d x d y d z will become d r d theta and d phi. So, and then correspondingly the, the limits will change or the domain in terms of now r theta phi we have to represent. So, what is this Jacobian here that is a, a given definition which we have already discussed that the first uh, row will be del x over del r del x over del theta and del x over del phi. So, the partial derivative of x with respect to r theta and phi. Similarly, the second row of this determinant will be a partial derivative of y with respect to r theta phi and then here the partial derivative of z with respect to r theta and phi. So, del x over del r del x over del r when we compute this partial derivative we will have sin theta cos phi and del x over del theta uh, so with respect to theta so, so r and phi will be treated as constant. So, this sin theta will become this cos theta here that is the only change. So, this uh, with respect to theta and then we have uh, del x over del phi. So, uh, x was r sin theta cos phi. So, this cos phi will become sin phi and with this minus sin because this derivative of cos phi is minus sin phi. Similarly, we can uh, now compute other derivatives. So, del y over del r will be simply this sin theta sin phi which is the term here and then we have del y over del theta. So, this will be with cos theta the rest sin and r will remain and then with respect to phi this sin phi will become this cos phi and r sin theta will remain as it is. Similarly, now with respect to this z with respect to r we will have cos theta here and with respect to theta we will have minus sin theta and the r will remain as it is. And then we have here uh, with respect to phi of this z. So, z uh, does not have phi it is z is equal to r cos theta and therefore, we have this 0 here because there is no phi term in z. So, del z over del phi will be uh, 0. And now, we can simply uh, compute this determinant we can determine the value that will be coming here r square sin theta. So, now we will remember that this Jacobian term which is coming because of this change of variables in this triple integral the value of this uh, Jacobian term is nothing but r square sin theta. So, now the uh, Cartesian coordinate to the cylindrical uh, coordinate. So, again the representation for this point x y z in the Cartesian coordinate and it will be represented now in this uh, uh, cylindrical coordinate by r phi and z. 
So, again this triplet with r phi and z. So, z is precisely the same which was in an Cartesian coordinate. So, the distance from this point to this perpendicular drawn to the x y plane. So, that distance the third uh, member of this uh, point here is the same as this z in the Cartesian coordinate and now this phi is similar to what we have in the spherical coordinate that is the angle precisely this one which we have already discussed that is the phi which is from this x axis to this line which is joining this origin to this x y uh, 0 point on the x y plane. And now this r, r is again uh, that distance here uh, from this point to this now, yeah, that is a difference here in the spherical coordinate we have this r from this point to the given point, but now this r is the distance in the x y plane. So, basically in the x y plane we are uh, representing by the polar coordinate r is the distance to this point and phi is the angle from this uh, x axis and this z here it is the same as uh, the given in the Cartesian coordinate. So, there is no change in the z and this x y simply they are given by this r phi and that is nothing but the polar coordinate in this x y plane. So, I x the relation again uh, since it is a polar coordinate in this x y uh, plane. So, x is r cos phi and y is r sin phi. So, in polar coordinate we used to call this angle theta, but now it is a different representation we are calling it phi. So, the relation remains exactly the same x is equal to r cos phi and y is equal to r sin phi and this z uh, is same as the z in the Cartesian coordinate. So, this is the simple relation when we uh, talk about the cylindrical coordinate and here this relation again coming from the polar coordinate that this x square plus y square will be r square in this case. So, here now if we talk about the triple integral and the change of variables. So, we have this integral which is written in this Cartesian coordinates and if we want to make this uh, change of variables here x is equal to r cos phi, y is equal to r sin phi and z is equal to z. In that case this integral will be written as, so the direct substitution for x here r cos phi for y we have replaced by r sin phi and z because it was same there. So, it remains z and then this Jacobian term will come again and dr d phi d z instead of d x d y d z because our uh, variables are i f, uh, r phi and z now in case of the uh, cylindrical coordinate. So, this is the cylindrical not the spherical one, but the cylindrical uh, coordinates. So, cylindrical coordinates. So, in this case we have uh, this Jacobian now which we can compute by this uh, uh, determinant again this uh, first row will be a partial derivative of x with respect to r then phi and then z, but there is no z. So, naturally this will become 0 here y also does not have z this will become 0 and this is 1 here. So, these are the trivial situations that this will become 0 because x does not have z y also does not have z this will also become 0 and this uh, will become 1 and then we can compute del x over del r and del x over del phi. So, simply this is coming like cos phi minus r sin phi 0 0 and here 1 and then of y with respect to r that will be sin phi and here sin phi will become cos phi with this derivative 0 and this z has uh, only z. So, there is no r and phi. So, naturally these members will be 0 here and once we compute this determinant. So, this will be coming simply r. So, again because there was no change in z. So, basically this is similar to what we do in polar coordinates. So, we are changing from Cartesian to polar coordinates because uh, the x and y are changed not the z. Z remains as it is in the polar in this is cylindrical coordinates. So, we have again the Jacobian which was also in polar coordinate as r. So, the only change when we do this uh, change in this triple integral this x will be replaced by r cos phi, y will be replaced by r sin phi and z will remain as it is 
and this factor here this uh, Jacobian will be R and dx dy dz will become dr d phi and d z. So, let us uh, go through uh, some problems where we can use uh, the idea of this changing to cylindrical coordinates in this problem number 1. So, changing to cylindrical coordinates we evaluate this integral. So, the integrand is z and x square plus y square dx dy dz and this domain d is given by x square plus y square uh, less than equal to 1. So, that is the disc circular disc and then we have uh, in the direction of z as well that means it varies from 2 to 3. So, the z coordinates are directly given that z varies from 2 to 3 and then we have uh, this circular disc here in the x y plane x square plus y square less than equal to 1. So, this is a cylinder here with radius 1 circular cylinder with radius 1 and it varies in the direction of this z from 2 to uh, 3. So, this is the, the picture here the x coordinate y coordinate and this z coordinate and we have uh, from z is equal to 2 to z is equal to 3 that is the height of this cylinder along this z axis and that is the axis of the cylinder as well. And then we have the circular disc here uh, which is x square plus y square less than 1. So, the radius of the cylinder is, is 1 and the height here is from 2 to 3. So, it is natural to use uh, for instance the cylindrical coordinates because uh, this is exactly the cylinder is given and it will be much more convenient if you use cylindrical coordinate in, in such problems. So, we have the relation that x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sin theta and z uh, remains uh, z as usual. We also know that uh, this x square plus y square in this case uh, will become uh, this r square and also the Jacobian term which will be uh, requiring for this change of variable of this triple integral and that is in cylindrical coordinate that is also r we have just evaluated in the previous slide. So, now this integral the given integral will be represented in this uh, polar coordinate. So, this r here that is for the Jacobian. So, we have this term because of the Jacobian and then this dr d phi and d theta which will be replaced for this dx dy dz with this extra Jacobian term. And then the first let us discuss this uh, integrand. So, the z as it is and x square plus y square has become now r square. Now, we come to the limits here for r. So, it is very clear that or let us first put the limits of the z. So, the z limits are trivially given there that z varies from 2 to 3. So, the limits of z 2 to 3. So, once we have uh, covered the limits of z, then what is left? It is a projection to the x y plane and that is nothing but the circle. So, here once we have fixed this limits of z, what is left now is a circle in the x y plane which we know already in polar coordinates what will be the limits for the circle. The r is going from 0 to 1 because that is the radius here uh, is, is 1 of the circle. So, r is moving from 0 to, to 1 and then the theta is moving from 0 to uh, 2 pi the, the whole circle. So, th uh, or the phi in this case we take uh, in cylindrical polar coordinate here uh, here phi. So, phi varies from 0 to 2 pi and r goes from 0 to uh, 1 and then we have changed the integral we have taken care for the Jacobian term and, uh, and now we can evaluate uh, this integral. So, this is the integral we want to evaluate. So, first uh, we will go with this evaluation of the integral with respect to r. So, here we have r cube dr that is the integral and r goes from 0 to 1. So, this r cube when we integrate will be r 4 divided by 4 and when we put the limits there 0 and 1. So, we will get nothing but 1 by 4 and the z remain as it is and we have two more 
integrals now with respect to phi and with respect to z. So, with respect to phi there is no phi term in the integrand. So, simply it will be phi and then we will put the limit 0 to 2 pi. So, the upper limit will give 2 pi. So, for this uh, integral with respect to phi we will get 2 pi. So, 2 pi and this by 4 and then we have z dz. Again this z dz is is z square by 2 and then we need to put this upper limit and the lower limit. So, uh, this will be uh, z square by 2 z square by 2 and then 2 to 3. So, this is 1 by 2 and then we have here uh, 9 and minus this 4. So, that is 5 here. So, 5 by 2 and then this 2 will get cancelled. So, we have 5 by 4. So, that is the uh, value of this given integral and with the help of uh, this cylindrical coordinate uh, which was uh, natural because of the domain the was cylinder and also the integrand was having this x square plus y square term and uh, that becomes immediately this r square and uh, then everything uh, became very simple to integrate once we change to the polar coordinate. So, we take another problem here changing to spherical coordinate. So, now we will change to spherical coordinate to evaluate this integral. So, here we need to be again very careful that what are the limits here. The limits are this x square plus y square to uh, 1 and then we have 0 to square root uh, 1 minus x square and we have uh, for the x 0 to 1. So, we have to identify looking at the limits of the integral that what is the domain because once we know the domain then uh, it is easier to uh, represent that in the spherical coordinates as well. So, in this case our the limits for this z that is the inner one. So, z goes from x square plus y square to 1 and here this is for y, y goes from 0 to uh, square root 1 minus x square and this x goes from 0 to so 0 to 1. So, these are the limits. So, here z is equal to x square plus uh, y square that is the first the inner one the most inner one. So, x square plus y square or z square is equal to x square plus y square. So, this is nothing but that is the, the equation of the cone we have. So, that means in the direction of z we are going from this cone which is represented by uh, z is equal to x square plus y square and, and that is the that that is the cone here. So, this is x and this is y then uh, and this is uh, z here. So, in the direction of z so that is the that is the cone here it is represented by by this equation. Uh, z is equal to square root x square plus y square. So, what we realize from here that z is going from this cone to 1 to fixed number 1. So, z ends here in the direction of z at z is equal to 1. So, that is a plane uh, parallel to this x y plane at z is equal to 1. So, here always the z moves from this uh, cone to this z is equal to 1. So, that is the direction of the z and then if we look closely here y is equal to square root uh, y is equal to square root x 1 minus x square that means y square plus x square is equal to 1. So, that is the circle and here x goes also from 0 to 1. So, the y that is a projection of this cone here in, in the x y plane that will be the projection in the x y plane. So, here we have x and y if we project this cone we will get this x y uh, I mean circle in this x y plane whose radius will be 1. So, this the two uh, outermost limits suggest now that y is moving from 0 to the circle y is from 0 to circle and x from 0 to uh, 1. So, that is the portion of this uh, circle. So, one fourth of the circle here in the positive quadrant and then we have in the direction of this z up to z is equal to 1 and from the cone. So, only this portion of the circle and then the corresponding uh, uh, cone here 
will is represented by uh, these limits. So, this is uh, the cone here up to z is equal to 1 and it starts from the origin, but as we have just discussed that this x is equal to 0 to 1 and y is equal to this 0 to square root 1 minus x square suggests that we are in the first quadrant of this uh, x y plane. So, naturally uh, this is the uh, the cone which is represented here and now we need to convert into the uh, spherical coordinates. So, for spherical coordinates we have the relation x is equal to r sin theta cos phi, y is equal to r sin theta sin phi and z is equal to r uh, cos theta. So, with this relation we can easily compute this Jacobian which we have already discussed that is r square sin theta and we have also this relation here x square plus y square plus z square is equal to uh, r square and now we need to compute because we need this angle here which is uh, which is required in this spherical coordinate uh, which is represented by this theta. So, the theta limits. So, just to note this that z is equal to 1. So, this is the z is equal to 1 here. So, from here to here we have uh, this distance 1 and then this uh, circular part also has radius 1 that has also radius 1 because uh, that is what we have uh, observed there that this z is square uh, is equal to x square plus uh, y square. So, when z is 1 this is basically ending with the circular disk as x square plus y square is equal to 1. So, this distance is 1, this distance is 1. So, this is the maximum angle we have for for this uh, theta. So, theta angle uh, to cover the whole this given cone will be from, from 0 to pi by 4 that will be the limit for the theta and for the x y axis for this uh, phi and r we have already observed that this is the portion we are going to cover it now. So, the r will go from 0 to 1 that will be r from 0 to uh, 1 and for phi now for phi will be 0 to pi by 2 to cover this portion there. So, once we have covered in this one direction as discussed before that means in the direction of z we, we are yes we have not discussed for the for the z here. So, the limits of this z will be from the cone and to this z is equal to 1. So, from this 0 to we are going to this uh, yeah, we are talking about the spherical coordinate. So, we need r. So, r will be this distance from here to the points uh, the maximum distance there on this circular disk. So, z is equal to 1 that circular disk is nothing but z is equal to 1 there. So, we are moving from 0 for r we are moving from 0 to this disk here 0 to that disk here 0 to this disk here. So, that z is equal to 1 will suggest us now for the limits of the r because z is equal to already given r cos theta. So, this r cos theta is equal to 1 r cos theta is equal to 1 will give uh, the r because it depends on this angle theta the r depends on this angle theta here for example, when theta is pi by 2 this r is nothing but 1, but here it is different and uh, it is varying with uh, theta. So, the r will be given by 1 over cos theta and this theta we have discussed already uh, 0 to pi by 4 and for phi we have discussed that it will go from uh, 0 to uh, 0 to pi by 2. So, this was uh, for r phi and theta we have discussed uh, for all. So, we can now change the variables. So, this was the integral there and that will be converted. So, for r that is a distance from here to that point in spherical co uh, polar coordinates not in the cylindrical. Cylindrical we have uh, only in the x y plane we have to look for the for, for the theta and r, phi and r. So, now we are in the spherical coordinate. So, that r is the distance from this point uh, to this uh, where we exit this domain. So, that is exactly the z is equal to r where r is given by 1 over cos theta. So, this is r from 0 to 1 over cos theta that is sec theta here 
and for uh, the limits of the theta we have already discussed that is a 0 to pi by 4 and for uh, phi we will be moving from 0 to pi by 2 and that is 1 over this r here because x square plus y square plus z square is r square. So, that is 1 by r and this r square sin theta that is the Jacobian term r square sin theta that is a Jacobian term and then we have this dr d theta d phi. So, now we can easily integrate uh, this one. So, first with respect to r because this is r dr. So, we will have r square by 2 that means sec square theta by 2 and then we have sin theta here. So, this is nothing but the uh, sin theta and this uh, 1 sec theta uh, will go to 1 over cos theta. So, the 10 theta sec theta. So, sec theta 10 theta with this half again we want to integrate with respect to theta. So, the integral of this sec theta 10 theta will be again uh, sec theta and the limits here 0 to pi by 4 and this factor half is sitting there. Already we can substitute these limits. So, this sec pi by 4 will be square root 2 and then minus 1 there and for phi we will get this phi by uh, pi by 2. So, this 1 by 2 will make this 4. So, that is the value of the given integral square root 2 minus 1 pi by 4. The last example where we will be changing again to spherical coordinate to evaluate uh, this integral and again the changing to the spherical coordinate we have to uh, look for the geometry what we are having in this integral limits. So, for the inner one z goes from 0 to square root 1 minus x square minus y square that means z square plus x square plus y square is equal to 1. So, we are moving from in the direction of z from 0 to that is sphere of radius 1 that is the equation z is equal to square root uh, 1 minus x square minus y square that is the sphere. So, we are mo moving from 0 in the direction of z to that is sphere. So, we have to uh, now look a little bit more careful and then in the direction of this y and, and this uh, x this is nothing but that circle only when this is sphere is projected to to this x y plane and then we have uh, x from 0 to 1 and y from 0 to uh, 1 by uh, y square root 1 minus x square. So, that is precisely in the x y plane uh, what we have that is uh, the uh, values for this y and x that is a circle circular part of, of, of this uh, limits and then here in the direction of, uh, of this z we are moving from 0 to the sphere 0 to the sphere. So, now again this is natural to consider the spherical coordinate uh, which uh, will convert this. So, x is equal to r cos theta y is equal to r sin theta and z is equal to r cos theta the j will be this r square sin theta and again this relation. So, now this integral will be converted to this integral. So, we have this Jacobian term we have 1 over square root 1 minus r square and then dr d phi d theta. So, now for this r the limits of r always from this 0 to that is sphere 0 to that is sphere. So, the distance from origin to that sphere is constant that is the radius of this sphere because the sphere has the center 0 and radius 1. So, that radius is 1. So, r goes from 0 to 1 to that sphere and then we have to see about this angle of phi which is uh, yeah the angle phi first. So, which is uh, from this x axis. So, that is uh, uh, 0 to pi by 2 because that was 0 to this square root 1 minus x square. So, that is in the x y plane and then we have uh, the limits of the theta. So, again to cover this sphere in this uh, positive this octant. So, we have to go from 0 to pi by 2. So, with these limits we have covered all these uh, the, the whole uh, given uh, spherical uh, part and now we can easily integrate because with respect to r we have here r square over over 1 minus um, r square. So, first we are evaluating the inner integral r square uh, divided by square root 1 minus r square. So, here by substitution this r is equal to sin t we can easily uh, get this uh, sin square t which will be converted to 1 minus cos 2 t which we can integrate now and the value will be 
pi by 4. So, the value of this inner integral is pi by 4 and then we have sin theta d phi d theta. So, this uh, again this d phi will give us pi by 2 only and then the outer one sin theta will be cos theta with minus sin and 0 to pi by 2. So, we will get pi square by 8 the value of this integral. So, what we have seen now at least two uh, special cases where the we have considered the spherical coordinate and also the cylindrical coordinate in this triple integral. The, the concept was this change of variables where the Jacobian we need to convert and the most difficult part again in, in this triple integral is finding the, the limits corresponding to the given uh, space here in, in, in spherical we have to represent the coordinates in spherical coordinate when we are changing or in cylindrical coordinates, but uh, the evaluation become much easier if we have a, a suitable uh, change there in variables. So, these are the references we have used and thank you very much for your attention.